she talks for you. Let us talk. Today is um, the day of Transgender Remembrance Day. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it's, it's the Roman 23rd year, and it's a day where um, uh, transgender people that have lost their lives because of violence, um, they're remembered on this day. And today, what we really want to do is take a moment of silence uh, to remember those people and also remember everyone else in the LGBTQ community that has lost their lives because of anti-LGBTQ violence. The names on, which are not all the names, by the way, there are a lot more that happens, on that memorial were both um, LGBTQ teens that have committed suicide and also transgender uh, of the community that have lost their lives because of violence. And if anybody noticed, the very first name on there was a 16-month-old. Uh, his father actually beat him to death because they wanted to try to stop him acting like a little girl. It's, it's absolutely insane. We're always talking about QTOP being, bringing both sides, the gay and the straight community together, and really when we're talking about bullying, um, it's not really just the LGBTQ youth that, that it happens to, it's really straight, it's, it's everybody. everybody, it's right? Everybody. So we really wanted to do this show, we thought this was a very important show to do, and we actually, enlisted some help in doing this. She's a clinical psychologist. Uh, she's also uh, a psychology internship training director and clinical supervisor of the trauma program at the Karen Horney Clinic. She's been quoted in, uh, in About.com, Pause I Am Radio, and the New York Times, and was recently quoted in Maxim Magazine just about this particular subject confronting the bullies. Our second guest um, also has, he served nine years in the Massachusetts legislature. He was the first Latino and openly gay man that was elected to a Massachusetts state, to the Massachusetts State Senate. And as senator, he, he worked to protect gay marriage in Massachusetts. He really worked around, you know, protecting youth in uh, schools. Um, and currently, his present job is he is the president of GLAD. And for those of you that don't know, that is the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. Um, and he's also one of the leading men in the Instinct Magazine. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Dr. Jacqueline Simon Gunn and Mr. Jarrett Barrios. Can we call, call you Dr. Jackie? Yeah, I'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Dr. Jackie. One of my first questions that come up is, what makes people be bullied? If they're bullied in their household, um, a lot of shaming comments from particularly the father figure, but also from the mother figure. Mm -hmm. um, so it can go in that direction, and then they, um, because of their depleted self-worth, they want to then perpetrate. Mm -hmm. So as a result of being bullied and shamed and feeling worthless, they then go out and bully on their own. Um, I think that's probably the primary mm -hmm. dynamic. Um, more specifically in terms of the gay teenage suicide, mm -hmm. I think that often what happens is the experience at home create shame, the, the confusion that goes around in a young man or woman's mind around their sexuality may be kept private and subtle comments may be heard. And then now with the internet, it's even worse. Right. So they already start out with weak senses of selves right. and, that, and for some reason, people that bully can sense that and then they get further bullied. So the period where 
you're going through in your mind what's going on and feeling different um, could actually lead to bullying other gay people as a result of not wanting to really accept their own sexual orientations. So is there a way if somebody's a bully? Do they ever grow out of that? Or Someone bullying in childhood and early adolescence possibly could grow out of that phase, probably when someone larger beats the shit out yeah. of them, you know, and they realize they're not all that, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or they mature, um, or they can go on to become sociopaths. Um, mm -hmm. It's hard to predict that outside of the therapeutic environment. Jared, it, it, as far as you're concerned, I mean, do you feel, you know, what's going on in, in the bullying that happens, is it because of us being more out there as far as the LGBT community, the way that we're represented in the media. Take a theme from the good doctor here about the, the stuff that happens on the internet now. And, and use an example maybe distinguish between bullying, because there's, um, there's what I think a lot of us who went to high school before the internet, which is maybe most, some, some of us, <laughs> older than us, <laughs> before the age of Facebook, where bullying was, you know, the guy shoving you in the hall, right. you know, or yeah. on the bus and going after you every day and that right. sort of thing. But now we have this thing, and the term sometimes they use called cyberbullying, and it's so public in the way that we don't so have privacy anymore, yeah. right? It's extraordinarily public and humiliating at a time in your life when all you want to be is like everybody else. So even though we're living in a world where there are, you know, there's there's Kurt on Glee, and there's Modern Family, and there's brothers and sisters, and we have so many. Um, touch points where we can, at least as adults, look at and maybe identify with what we see on television. You know, you're 14, you're 15, you're 16, you still want to be like everybody else. Right. And maybe don't feel like you have the vocabulary to identify as a gay, a lesbian, bisexual, transgender person yet. It starts at home, but you also have to hold the school's responsible. You know, I grew up on Long Island, I went to high school every day of my life, I was picked on called a fag, I had a student red fag on the back of my jacket. And the school's attitude was boys will be boys. And then my mother, who was very supportive of me and my brother, went through it again with my brother, who's also gay. Here I am, here's a mother who's supportive of her children. She's sending us to school wanting us to do better, and the school is running a blind eye. I think there needs to be some kind of programs involved that say you have to teach acceptance because we're all different, we're all we all come from different backgrounds. That environment is the problem is on the kid who's being harassed, right? And, and at law, like what's, what, what can legislatures do, what kind of we expect of our politicians? Well, you know, first of all, shift the burden onto the kid who's doing the bullying and make the schools deal with the bully's behavior, right? As opposed to leaving it to the parent of the kid who's being bullied to raise the issue with the kid themselves mm -hmm. to raise the issue. And I, mean, I think that's, that's part of the, the kind of the shift in how we think about it, right? It's this kid who's bullied who's got the problem. I was reading a statistic, 50% of high school kids have bullied. That's a huge number. And 90% of openly gay kids in high school are physically bullied every year. If we're in New York, and there's still intolerance of differences, think about the middle of the country, right? where people are, and if you're from the middle of the country, I'm sorry. No, I hope I said go in the middle. Stay out in the middle. <laughs> that doesn't do legal stuff, we do culture change. Glad, um, you know, we don't lobby, we're not political. What we do is, um, for example, we try to get more gay characters uh, on television shows. We work advocating the news for full and fair coverage. And through all of that stuff, the idea is the most important way you can change people's attitudes as an individual is when you come out to your parents, to your friends, what have you. The second most important way, particularly these, these you call them the middle states, we call them the square states. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you don't feel safe coming out in those places and you leave to New York or Los Angeles, right. well, where's the impact? Right. Well, one of the places the impact is when you're sitting in front of your television, right? And you actually, and you watch Modern Family, you see the portrayal of interesting statistic. You know that when they do public, they've done actually, pub, ABC does public opinion research on their television shows. Right. And of the three families, America is most sympathetic and likes the most the gay couple in that show, that's right? Interesting. Which is fascinating. Yeah. But think about think about how that opens them up to the idea of gay people can be parents. Gay right. people can, you know, right. have neuroses just like the other two couples. She talks for you. Let us talk. Politics.
politics, religion, the times that we live in, subject driven, so Q talks are given.